What's up, YouTube? So, as you know, I'm I'm a mobile repair dude, but I also do a lot of projects, like product projects here in my tiny little peanut shop. So I I've, I've got you know this place packed full of little projects. Um, by the way, I came from a 2,000 square foot shop to this, which was a big adapting kind of thing, but truth be told, I always use my car in the parking lot when I had a sh huge 2,000 square foot shop, so that's why I have this little peanut shop now. It works great for me. But anyway, I have this Honda Ruckus, GUI 6 Ruckus. Sweet wheels, by the way. Um, problem is, here, let me see, I'm going to set this down. So, see this wheel? See how I can move this wheel like this? What's going on here is these bushings are completely shot. So I have to remove the motor. That's why I have it here at the shop. Anytime I have to remove a motor, I pretty much bring it back here. But uh, I'll have to remove this motor and drop down, drop it down and remove these bushings. Um, I've got this, this really nice set of bushings here made by Tita. Really good stuff. So the one thing about Chinese scooters is uh, the rubber on anything Chinese scooter related just suck. That's why we have our Chinese scooter upgrade kit for like just basic Chinese scooters to take care of that kind of stuff. But when you convert your Ruckus to a Chinese GY6, the motors by the way are bulletproof. Never had any problems. The rubber on the bushings, not so much. So we're gonna be upgrading these bushings to uh, some bushings that are made in Taiwan, not China. So, check it out. All right, step one, we gotta get this uh, jack up underneath here. I'm just using this uh, Low Pro k &L jack, which I have on the website if you want. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just getting like, so it doesn't have to have a kickstand. I'm gonna do it just like that because when I release the motor, it's gonna fall kind of down, but then the frame will just stay in place, just like that. All right, so now I've got the uh, the ruck is just you know sitting up straight. Um, so the next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start loosening um, all the uh, motor bolts in order to get the uh, the motor kind of lowered down. So what's gonna end up happening is this engine. I'm gonna put a piece of wood under it. It'll just Basically, the, the the bike's set up just fine with the frame, just like that. Um, the motor will be released from the actual frame, and it will sit here on a block of wood. And then I could eventually pull the motor out, or I could just do it while it sits there in the bike. Figure out what I'm going to do here. I'll probably keep it attached. It's less work because it's got the disc brake uh, on the back. I don't want to bleed it. Uh, I might end up doing it. We'll see. But... Uh, my two second thought here is leave it all attached, just drop the motor down so I can get to the bushings and the shock bushings and uh, work from there. So, well, son of a gun. I don't know where my big block of wood went. I think I actually took it home. Uh, so I have to uh, figure out a different way to do it. So I got this little block, uh, the steel block from our press. I'm gonna, uh, I put it up underneath there. It's real loose right now. There's not gonna be much weight on this anyway. Okay, so I need a 17 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna put that there. Actually, this nut's fairly loose anyway, which probably didn't help with the bushings, but uh, I'm gonna hold that there and then I'll get my Allen. I don't know what size it is yet. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be different for everybody. It's very rare that you see this Allen head anyway. Normally it'd be like a 14 millimeter. But anyway, I'm gonna loosen that and pull this bolt out, this really long bolt out of the motor mount. From that point, everything will be loose and I can raise up the, uh, the ruckus frame. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna start loosening this sucker. And it, this is an eight millimeter, if it even matters for you. That's an eight millimeter uh, Allen. And then on this side, it's just wedged up against the frame as I loosen it. Okay, so I got the, got the nut off here. Here's the nut here. 
or the big bolt. The nut is off the other side and I've got everything loose so I'm, I'm just going to pull this out. From that point this motor will drop down but it won't because of this guy. There it goes. Okay, I got most of it off. I'm going to kind of step over this. There it goes. So now that the motor's sitting on our little guy that I uh, from the press, I'm just lifting this up and it's lifting the frame up. I'm just lifting the jack. So now, let me show you where we're at here. You haven't seen, you can't see that. Uh, so here we are, the motor mounts loosened. Now I've got full access to these bushings. The shock is still holding it on. It's being held up by this guy. And I raise it up with this uh, little jack. So here we are so far. But look how bad these bushings are. Look at this. See if I can even, I can almost just pop that out of there. That collar out of there. But see that bushing? Not good. And we're gonna upgrade those with some really good bushings. So or there'll be that bushing and then the other side of course and then you know the shock bushing as well. All right, so I'm gonna take this uh, elbow off that's for the air filter because it's going to be in the way when I lower the motor. All right, so here we go. Notice I put a roll of shop rags in case it rolls over. So let's try this. There it goes. Now the motor, I'm going to actually push the shock way up, way up like this. Okay. So everything is loose and get to this. So I'm going to roll this back just to here. I don't think I'm going to detach the complete motor and put it on the bench or anything. I don't see a need for that. At least I'm, I might do that. I don't know. Okay, so this is what I did off camera. Got the jack holding it up. I swiveled the whole motor over. Um, I've got the, the motor actually sitting on these rags. Roll rags so it's nice and padded. I have this guy now, the part of the press, holding up the bell because it weighs more on one side. Now I have access to this bushing, this bushing, and this bushing. What I normally do is uh, to take these out just to relieve the pressure off of the uh, existing bushing by taking a little saw. And I'm just going to cut through all the way through the uh, metal bushing, just the bushing, not the motor, and it'll relieve all the pressure on the outer. Let me show you exactly what I mean here. This is what a bushing looks like. See that really good rubber in there on this new bushing? And this one just sucks. But I'm gonna cut the collar out on the outside here. It'll relieve all the pressure and then the old bushing will come right out. So here I go. You're doing this the same way as you re as you would do on a uh, steering neck. If you're replacing the steering neck bearings, that's kind of what you do on the races to get them out. Otherwise, it's really difficult to get out. Okay, so finally I got and uh, I cut through the bushing there, which makes life way easy. Now you just take your socket and you can just lightly hammer it out. Just like that. See that? I, I kind of just went barely through. I got a little bit of the engine, but not much at all. You're talking, I run my fingernail over and you can barely feel it. So that one's out. Here's the old one. Here's the new one. That one was toast big time. Now I just have to press this guy in. Okay, so here's my concoction. C-clamp, washer, I have this lightly started. I just tapped it with this mallet very lightly to get it centered, completely centered. It's pretty close. 
And then my C, my C clamp, the flat backing is on the back side. I'm just cranking this puppy down. It's going nice and easy. This takes a little bit of muscle. And you just keep going until it's uh, completely flush up against the engine case. It's getting tight now. <clears throat> ah, there it goes. It is in. Check this out. So here we go. Nice and flush on both sides. And one bushing done. Now the next bushing. Check out this old bushing, see if I can focus. It was rubbing metal on metal here. This is gonna be a nine day difference. And then I gotta pull this guy out. All right, so here is the other side. I've got this other side done, but it has to come in from the inside, just so you know, from inside the, here, not the outside, because it will hit the uh, engine case. And you can always unbolt it, but this is what needs to happen. So I'm at the halfway point here. I just want to show you how I mounted everything. Just cranking that sucker in there. So I'm about to start working on this rear shock bushing. And uh, this one wasn't bad enough for just the collar just to fall out of there. Um, so I'm going to just like put a drill bit in there and kind of work it. And just keep doing that until I can get that bushing out of there so that I can cut that out. So that's what I'm going to do. Start cranking it and finally, eventually it'll come out of there. There we go. Now I can put my saw in there and start kind of getting that cut out. So I'll do that. So I have this guy pretty much figured out for sure. It, it slides in and, in and out, but I can't quite get it out. So I have here a blind pull, blind hole bearing puller here. So I'm gonna stick that guy in like that and then uh, tighten it down and use my slide hammer to pull it out. I'll do that, I'll get it put together right now and then I'll show you how to do it. So as you can see, it's all tweaked. So I'm just gonna slide this blind hole bearing puller in and as I tighten this, this guy separates. It's not in the, it's kind of like not the best setup here because it's, it's all tweaked, but this is the way I'm gonna do it. And then I'll screw my, uh, the back of it on and I'm slide hammering it back. There it is. All right, so that's out. And this is how I uh, kind of cut it. See how I like tweaked it in and it kind of bent that guy in. That's why it's kind of pain in the butt to get out. But it, it only comes out this way. It won't come out through the back because there's uh, not enough room. So ready for the new one. So on this one, I just, I just sprayed some lube and then uh, kind of push that guy, get it straight, uh, straight there. And then I, I'm probably gonna try to tap it in. Let's try. Let's see what happens here. If I just tap it in. I'm just gonna go real slow at it. These ones generally go in a lot easier. You don't want to hit the crap out of it. Very baby steps until you get them in. Right, so here it is, all nice and flush. Got this guy in and this one. We're all ready to put it back in. So we'll reverse what we just did. Okay, ladies and gents, so all of the uh, bushings are done. Now all I gotta do is put the motor back in, check it. I kind of moved it over, um, up underneath, sitting on these rags, and then I have this propped up because it's heavier on one side. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just slide this shock down, stick the bolt through it, into the, that rear bushing will be mounted. Then all I have to do is lift it up and put the, uh, the bolt through. All right, so let's see if we can get this set up. I might have to move the engine back a hair, maybe. Okay, there we go. 
sucker started. All right, well, probably gonna blow my sphincter out on this one. Let's see. This is when another hand would be great. All right, after blowing my sphincter out and working it and just lifting and pulling, not easy with one person. Two people is the key. I got it through, everything's attached. I just need to tighten this bolt down and we're good. All right, final bolt here. Ah, there we are. So bushings are installed and see it's, it's hard to do with one person, but I'm not getting much wobble, but there is definitely still is a problem here. Check this out. The wheel is loose. I don't know if it's just the nut in here that's loose, that could be the case, or bearing is loose, or bad, not loose. Um, but as far as the bushings go, that's something kind of solid. So yeah, having the, the wheel, if the nut's loose, having the wheel loose like that is a super common problem. I don't see a whole lot on the, the Honda Ruckuses, but a lot on just the Chinese scooters. This is actually a great wheel design. If the nut ever came loose, it's basically not gonna come loose because it's gonna run into the wheel. Unlike, you know, something like this, the nut could come off. So what a great wheel design that is. All right, so first step is jack the back end up. I can just do this with my hand. I'm just, I just have it on the kickstand on the other side. So, there we go. Good enough. Just need to get it off the ground. Now, get the wheels off. By the way, I pre-loosen these. Looks like I gotta get the exhaust off too. Which just exhaust is wanky. I know that he was uh, planning to replace it. This is just like a temporary thing. Clip these. Let's get this puppy off. All right. See how I can move that back and forth like that? I'm almost 100% sure that this is just loose. So I'm gonna tighten that sucker up. But this is a, a sweet uh, disc brake setup. I believe it's made by FLP. Way sweet. I have one for mine, I have drum brakes, which is not a good idea for the 232cc engine. The sucker's expensive though, these Brembo brakes. What a great, it's a sweet setup. Um, but one of the things he was saying, uh, Brandon is his name, was saying that uh, his brakes kind of lose uh, the pressure when he rides. I think what's happening is this, this wheel is moving open and close, you know, moving back and forth. This disc brake is here and that's causing uh, the caliper to open up um, the brake pads. So when you go to squeeze it again, you don't have it. It's not all there. So get that thing taken care of. Tighten that sucker up. All right, so 21 millimeter socket. I'm gonna crank this down, see what happens. Oh yeah, it was loose. Look at that. There's no play anymore. It moved just a hair, so. The only movement is moving the whole motor. So that was our problem. The, the uh, I'm gonna torque it down to 65 foot-pounds. It does have a nylon uh, locking nut on it, which it should, if, you, if yours doesn't, get an, a locking uh, nylon nut. So that's what I'll have to do, and that is an easy fix. We'll get the wheel put back on. Yeah, so after torquing it down, there is absolutely no play at all here. It is normal to have this, this kind of play though. You know, turning the wheel play. Um, but yeah, with these new bushings uh, and that, oh man, this thing's gonna ride like a Cadillac. Probably better than he's ever remembered. What a sweet bike though, these wheels are so awesome. Heck yeah, two piece. I'm jealous. Yeah, I'll just put the wheel back on. 
And be careful not to nick it or hit it on anything because these are super fancy. Just to be uh, certain that these don't come off, I, I just put a little bit of Loctite, not a whole lot. This is red. Red is uh, meant to never come off again, but you just do a little bit. I, I could do blue too, but I don't want these wheels coming off. All right, I've got these lug nuts torqued down. Check this out, I'm gonna actually put it on the tripod here. I'm gonna move this wheel. There's no movement at all. Any movement there is, the whole motor moves. So we are golden and we are in the safe zone. Um, now just put the exhaust back on. I'm gonna try to do a better setup than that so it doesn't come off on him. But I know that he's trying to upgrade to the spiral exhaust. Should be pretty sweet on this. These bikes are always a work in progress. Runs good. No play whatsoever. Perfect. All right, well, thanks for watching that how to install the bushing video. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, just watching and supporting my channel. If you have any uh, technical questions or, or want to just uh, support the channel, head over to our, my Patreon account. There are links down below. Uh, appreciate you watching, and uh, see you in the next video.